One of the things that we often deal with in bankruptcy is the joint bank account where one of the parties listed on the bank account is not filing for bankruptcy. Uh, this can come in many different situations. Very often our client comes in and says that, well, they're on the title to uh, their son's car. They didn't make any of the payments. All the payments were made by the son. The only reason that they were on the title is because at the time the car was purchased, um, the boy was a minor, and therefore they, they had to be listed on the title. But they don't have any money in the car, and they never use the car. Another example is bank accounts. Somebody might have a bank account, and if they're a single person, they list a brother or sister or mother or father jointly on the bank account so that if something happens to them, there's somebody who can step right in and has authority to write checks to pay uh, bills that, as they become due. The question then becomes, how is something like that, how is that property treated in bankruptcy? Um, as a general rule, you might say, well, the asset is owned 50-50. That doesn't always apply, because the situations that we run into, and let me use the bank account example. We had a case recently where a lady had a bank account, her husband passed away, all of the life insurance proceeds went into the bank account. At the bank's suggestion, she listed her brother, uh, who lived in another state, uh, as a joint signer on the account, so that if anything happened to her, he could step in and take care of the day-to-day -day needs. A couple of years later, the brother, who's completely forgotten about the bank account, files bankruptcy, doesn't even list the account because he's forgotten about it, and then in the course of the bankruptcy, it comes to light and the trustee says, well, it's a joint account, so the trustee is after half the money. And at the time of the bankruptcy filing, uh, there was $140,000 in the account. We ended up being retained by the sister who was not filing bankruptcy, who had deposited all of the life insurance proceeds into that account. We were able to defeat the trustee's claim on the basis of what we call a resulting trust. And we established that the brother who filed bankruptcy, he didn't put any money into the account. He never took any money out of the account. He never even had possession of any checks if he wanted to try to take money out of the account. He had forgotten what bank the account uh, was even located. And he didn't know what the account number was, and it didn't even come up until after he filed bankruptcy. And in Florida law, the courts have held that in that situation, the brother holds what the law calls bare legal title in trust for the sister. And they have no equitable interest in the assets of the account. So all of the account belonged to the sister, and the brother filing bankruptcy had zero interest in the account, and the sister was able to keep all of those funds. What we will generally do is if we recognize a situation like that before filing bankruptcy, we go ahead and suggest that one or the other be removed from the account so that we don't deal with that issue going through bankruptcy. Again, this, this is another one of these areas where it might sound simple, but the devil's in the details. It can be very complicated. If you have any situation like that, seek professional advice.